It has been almost seven months since Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gerskovich was detained in Russia. Last week, the U.S. ambassador to Russia visited the reporter and released a statement saying he remains in good spirits. The move came just days after a Russian court upheld an extension of Gerskovich's pretrial detention. It was supposed to expire in May, but will now continue through November 30th. Gerskovich was arrested in March on allegations of espionage. Both he and his employer have denied the claims, and the U.S. government has declared him to be wrongfully detained. Joining us now, Evan's sister, Danielle Gerskovich, and Wall Street Journal's assistant editor, Paul Beckett. Thank you both very much for coming on the show this morning. Danielle, it's always hard to find the right words and to be validating in a question about a situation like this with your brother. But how are you how are you doing? How are you being forced to cope in this situation? And what do you know about your brother's condition? I'm sure you can imagine it hasn't been easy uh, for any of us, but um, Evan is doing amazing. I look up to him so much, um, and he works very hard to keep his spirits up. Um, he uh, does what he can, um, you know, writing. Uh, we write letters to each other um, to stay positive and, and, and focused, and that's so inspiring for my parents and I. So we really are able to stay strong to uh, seeing him. And um, how, how much contact? You say you, you write letters. Um, are, you, are you able to communicate with him? Uh, yes, uh, we write letters about once a week, um, and I summarize uh, everything going on with their family, um, uh, daily life. Uh, I try to uh, make him smile, so we do a lot of jokes, a lot of sibling kind of jokes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And the impact on the entire family uh, must be indescribable. Is it Evan who, who drives you all to continue to function? It's got to be so hard. Um, Evan has always been um, an emotional center in our family, and um, so it's really hard without him. But we had to step up and be that for him. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm I'm really proud of us that despite the circumstances, I think we're all uh, holding on, and and um, it's really a testament to how amazing and and courageous Evan is. Mm -hmm. Danielle, good morning. Thanks so much for being with us. We're grateful for you to come on and share your story. I, I'm curious listening to you talk about writing letters back and forth with your brother. I was going to ask you how you're communicating, how often you hear from him. And does he give you a sense of how he's being treated? Is he allowed to describe how he's being treated there? Um, I'm sure you can understand. I can't get too much into the details of, about that, but um, I know that he's doing his best to eat well, um, stay healthy. Um, he meditates. He writes a lot. He's reading at a breakneck pace. <laughs> That's uh, hmm. very impressive. Um, and uh, I really enjoy writing letters to him, receiving them. Um, I get to hear his voice in my head. Um, and it's like we're talking together. So um, that, that keeps us all going. Mm -hmm. He's an extraordinary guy. And, and Paul, from your side of it at the Journal, uh, what are you hearing and what are negotiations to the extent you can, you can tell us even, negotiations like to get him back through the State Department? And do you have any contact with the Russians themselves? We have seen that over the months, you know, various statements from each side saying uh, serious about talks or the prospect of a prisoner swap or things like that. We would like to see more action, uh, to be honest. Um, we feel that it's so outrageous that Evan has been uh, jailed on these false charges that I think it's incumbent on the U.S. government to uh, deal with the Russians in a way that will bring him back to the family and back to the newsroom. Uh, ultimately, it will be a government-to-government -government negotiation that solves this, so we'd like to see that happen um, sooner rather than later, obviously. Paul, in the case of Brittany Griner, the Russians were adamant that they wanted the trial process to go through and to have some kind of verdict. Um, so that they could say, look, we, we did due process, and then she was released a few months after that. Is it your understanding that that's what, if there is going to be any timetable around some kind of swap or some kind of deal, 
Is it your understanding that the trial would have to take place first and have a verdict as well in Evans' case? That may be the case. That's one way in which this could be solved. And the Russians have uh, can keep him in pretrial detention uh, up to one year. So, as you mentioned earlier, uh, the latest extension was to November 30th. It wouldn't surprise us if that was extended uh, through to March. At some point, they have to produce some evidence or whatever evidence they claim to have um, at trial. So it's, it's possible, and the Russians have said before, that if it's going to be a prisoner swap, it would have to come after trial. But we remain hopeful that it wouldn't need to get that far and that the U.S. government could uh, find a way to bring him home well before that. All right. Our thanks to Danielle Gerskovich, an assistant editor for The Wall Street Journal. Paul Beckett, thank you both very much for coming on this morning. We appreciate it.